Well, I didn't expect to get to 94 because my father died at 93 and my grandfather died at 93. So I had a phone call this morning from one of my relatives and he said, you've beaten your father. And I said, that's right. <laughs> and I'm going to stay here for a lot longer yet. I was born in Culcairn, New South Wales. I moved to Melbourne after I got married. I moved to Melbourne to uh, take up a position at a teacher's college. Well, previous, prior to that, I'd always taught in, in country high schools. I was a teacher from when I was 16. When I was 16, I joined the education department as a junior teacher, as student teacher, they called us. I was a student teacher, class two, at Cape Street Heidelberg Primary School. And I then did primary teacher training and then went on to university. And after that, I taught in secondary schools until I moved to Melbourne to, te to be a lecturer in a teacher's college. And that was because I didn't want to be principal of a, of a country high school. That didn't appeal to me at all. I, was, I became a science education specialist and recognised worldwide for my work in science education. And I used to work with UNESCO on assign yes, UNESCO assignments to various countries to tell them how I th thought they should be teaching science. So that was interesting. I have three children. My son John has retired. He's in his late seventy, late sixties. He was a, an administrator. He sold medical equipment. And my daughter, Lisa, is still working. She's a nurse manager out at Western Group of Hospitals. And my other daughter well, used to be a nurse, then she became a psychologist and she's now retired. So they're my three children. Oh no, I've done a lot of writing, but this is the first one I've had published. I wrote a, a long book, a science fiction book, and I almost got it published, but not quite. It's a, the eavesdroppers are a group of, of six young teenagers who are students at the Georgetown Secondary College. Now they're unusual children, these young people. They all have special skills and one of them doesn't forget anything. She has total recall and the others make fun of her because she said, how can you forget? She could never forget. And then another one is an expert, one of the boys is an expert in the use of computers. He can do anything with computers. Another one can speak 15 different languages. And the school principal often calls on him when he has a parent who has difficulty understanding English. He calls on Peter to come and help translate for him. So they're the kind of children that, that are in the book. And they all get involved in various things. One of them was accused of, of selling drugs at the school. And he wasn't doing that at all. So the others decided to help him. And together they worked with the 
the school security people to find who was selling the drugs. And they didn't do anything themselves except listen and look and listen. They were eavesdroppers. They collected information and passed it on to people who could do the actions. So in that way, they found out who was selling the drugs and the drug squad moved in and arrested them. So they're the kind of adventures they got up to. And I started them in year 10 and they went to year 10 and 11 and year 12. And now the, at the end of this book, they're in the end of year 12. In the next book, they will start at university. I'm up to chapter 14 of the next book. I did that I wanted to write a book for young people, a Harry Potter kind of book, except that I didn't have magic in it. I just had a bit of science fiction in it. And that's the kind of book that I wanted to write. But I found out that once I I got the students talking to each other and doing things that they started to write the book. It was their ideas that kept coming up and going on to the pages. I was only doing it part time. I might get the next one done in one year. My computer works overtime when I'm writing and I just click away and make all kinds of mistakes, but I keep clicking away. And when I've had enough clicking, I go back and go through it and make and correct all the mistakes. At the moment, I'm calling it the magicians because there's a, a science fiction writer who once wrote that any advanced tech any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Now I had a good editor, an excellent editor, an experienced editor, and she did a lot of work on that. And I was very grateful to her for that. And I had a typesetter who typeset it and then the publisher who printed it. I think the Heights is a wonderful place. I just love it. And what I like most of all is the friendly staff. They're all friendly and they all look after me. The, the place is good. The food is good. The people are good. So what could you want better?